Hello everyone, welcome back to the second part of the rational exponents lecture, or essentially uh, fractional exponents. Uh, you'll notice this little sun dot over here. Uh, it will creep across the page and we'll get more of them throughout the lecture. Uh, so we'll kind of be able to tell time with the sun. Uh, nothing I can do about it right now, uh, but let's get started before it gets too bad, uh, as it will. Uh, it's moved a little bit even since I just started sitting here. So, um, last time we talked about how uh, when we had a fraction where n was the denominator, that would become the index of our exponent. Uh, there are a couple of different examples that you can see there um, that we did yesterday. Um, 27 to the power of a third is the third root of 27, which is 3. Uh, we can also have uh, decimals as exponents and turn them into fractions. So um, that is all on the screen below me and on your paper uh, as a uh, review. But what we're going to talk about today is when we have exponents that are something like 5 over 3. So the numerator in this case is going to equal something other than 1. And to kind of show you how we're going to approach that, uh, I'm going to show you what we can do with equivalent expressions. So if we have an expression 3 over 2, or 3 halves, we would be able to write that as 1 half multiplied by 3. If we think about it, 3 times a half gets us 3 halves. That means that those are equivalent expressions. I can do the same thing with 2 fifths. Um, we would have uh, 1 fifth multiplied by 2. Multiply 2 by 1 fifth, we get 2 fifths. So these are equivalent expressions. When we see a fraction with a numerator that's not 1 in an exponent, we are going to do something like this uh, so that we can evaluate it. Uh, let's move down. So we have 8 to the power of 2 thirds. Let's see, I'll do it here. 8 to the power of 2 thirds. I know that the denominator is going to be what I am using for my index of my radical. Um, what am I going to do with this 2? Well, let's break this up in this equivalent, into an equivalent expression um, to try to find out. So this could be equal to 8 to the power of 1 third multiplied by 2. And now it becomes a little bit more clear. If I get rid of this 1 third by writing this as a radical, I still have the squared, which means I still need to square everything in the end. So this could be equal to the third root of 8 to the power of 2, which is, this is 2 to the power of 2. If we evaluate this, that is just 4. Okay, So we can take the denominator as the index, and the numerator stays as the exponent. Um, and there's a couple of different ways that we can write that. So um, we have another example. 4 to the power of 5 halves. We are going to write that as 4 um, to the power of a half multiplied by 5, which is equal to the root of 4 to the power of 5. The root of 4 is 2. And then 2 by itself 5 times is 32. Yes, is 32. So that's your answer, 32. So we have a new rule. A new rule is that the n in, below me here, the n in our exponent, still goes to the index, while the m, uh, the numerator of our fraction, will go to stay as an exponent. And again, there's a couple of different ways we can write that. I'll show you. So we want to write 40 um, to the power of 2 thirds in two different ways. So there's two different ways we can write this thing. 40 to the power of 2 thirds could be equal to uh, the third root of 40. I take the denominator and I put it as my index squared. Or we could write this as 40 squared, we could square the 40 first, and then take the cube root of it. Either one of those is okay. So if you're asked an example to write a, this radical in two ways, 
Um, these would be the two ways, with the exponent inside the radical or with the exponent outside the radical. We can do that for negative eight to the power of six fifths. Negative eight to the power of six fifths. Let's write this in two ways. It could be um, the fifth root of negative eight all to the power of six, or we could have the six inside. So it would be negative eight to the power of six all third rooted. Um, I don't know why I said third rooted, it should be fifth rooted, but you get the idea, fifth rooted. So there's two different ways we can write it. When we're given one in this form or this form, there's only one way we can write it as a power. So I'll show you how to do that here. If we have the third root of three to the power of five, we are going to know that the five is the numerator and the three is the denominator of our fraction. So this would be three to the power of five thirds, just like that. If we have the third root of 25 squared, again, we know that this is the denominator and this is the numerator. So we can write this as 25 to the power of two thirds. The index is the denominator of the fraction and the exponent, whether it be here or inside uh, the radical, is our numerator every single time. So now there's some try it on your owns. Uh, let's see, there is three of them for you to do. So pause the video here and try them out and then come back and we'll see if we got them right. And then after that, we're going to evaluate uh, some powers together. Okay, let's do this. As you can see, the sun is starting to creep across, but something is blocking it. I believe it's my document camera. So we'll see if it gets to the other side, but we're making progress. Let's do 26 to the power of two fifths. And it wants us to write this radical in two ra the radical form in two different ways. So we could write this as, since five is on the bottom, it's the fifth root of 26 all squared, or we could square the 26 first. So we write 26 squared, all fifth rooted. And either of those would be considered acceptable, but if you're asked for both, you do need to write both. Um, next one asks us to write six to the power of five square rooted as a power. So if there's nothing here, that means it's a two. So we have a five as an exponent and two is the index. Five goes on the numerator, two goes in the denominator. We also have the fourth root of 19 all to the power of three. Um, the index goes in the denominator, the power goes in the numerator. This is 19 to the power of three fourths. Okay. Just as easy as taking the index and the exponent and putting them where they need to be um, in the fraction. So let's take this a step further and let's actually evaluate some problems. Uh, we're gonna do three together here and then there's going to be three for you to do on your own. Um, then you can check back. So we'll do 27 to the power of four thirds. So we are going to actually find out when it says evaluate, we want to know what number that actually turns out to be uh, as best we can. So uh, we are going to take the denominator and write it as the index. So we have the third root of 27 and this whole thing is to the power of four. Third root of 27 is three. So that's three to the power of four. Three times itself four times is equal to 81. So we're not going to be using our calculator still. We're just going to be um, using what we know about exponents and about um, squaring and square roots to um, find out what our answers are. Let's do negative 32 to the power of 0.4. So 0.4 is a decimal, which I do not like, but I know that I can write it as a fraction um, as 
4 tenths or reduce to 2 fifths. So this is the same as negative 32 to the power of 2 fifths. And this is something that's a little bit more manageable for me. I can take the fifth root of negative 32 and then square it to find out what the answer is. So I'll take the fifth root of negative 32 and then we're going to square that. So I know the fifth root of 32 is two. So the fifth root of negative 32 is negative two, all squared. Negative two squared is four. So although it looks daunting at the beginning, negative 32 to the power of 0.4 is actually just 0.4. Uh, after we have turned the decimal into a fraction, turned it into something that we can work with, with a radical and an exponent, and then just evaluated it from there. Um, let's do the next one. We've got 0 0.04 to the power of 3 halves. So again, I see a decimal that I do not like. So I am going to get rid of it. I can write that as 4 over 100 if I move the decimal place over. So this would be the same as 4 over 100 all to the power of 3 halves. I'm going to then be square rooting these numbers and then cubing them. So square rooting because the denominator is 2 and then cubing because the numerator is 3. So this is the square root of 4 divided by the square root of 100 all cubed. So that is 2 over 10 cubed. So 2 cubed is 8. 10 cubed is 1,000. What I think I really should have done is I should have um, reduced this before I put the cube to it. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to cross this out. And I'm going to put a step in between. This is same as 1 fifth to the power of 3, which is more manageable for me to cube and then reduce. So three, 1 to the power of 3 is just 1. And then 5 to the power of 3, 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. That's a whole lot better because I need to have my answers in the lowest common terms, the lowest um, that you can. So 8 out of 1,000 would get you something like 2.5 out of 3 on this problem. I'd really be looking for 1 out of 125. Um, you can now do the problems uh, given below that say try, uh, pause the video here, and when you're done, uh, come on back and we will give it a go together. Okay, let's do this thing. Um, we have negative 27 to the power of 4 thirds. This is quite close to the one we had before with 27 to the power of 4 thirds, but we have a negative instead. So again, we're going to cube root a negative 27 and then put it to the, all to the power of 4. Uh, if the cube root of 27 was 3, then the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. So negative 3 to the power of 4 is actually 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, all of negatives is 81. Turns out to be the same um, as the problem right above this one. If we have 81 to the power of 3 quarters, we can write this as the fourth root of 81 to the power of 3. That's the fourth root of 81 to the power of 3. I know the fourth root of 81 is 3, so that's 3 to the power of 3. And then 3 times itself, 3 times is 27. Easy as that. The last one that you guys did um, on your own was 0 0.01 the power of three halves. And I don't like decimals, so I'm going to be getting rid of that and turning it into a fraction. Moving the decimal over two places, I would be left with one over 100. So this is the same as saying one over 100 to the power of three halves. I need to square root both of these as the denominator is two. So that's the square root of one over the square root of 100 cubed. That would be 1 over 10, again, cubed. 1 cubed is 1, 
and then 10 times 10 times 10 is one with three zeros or 1,000. That's what we're left with. So although some of these might look a little bit daunting, um, as long as we take our time, we do it step by step. We take the denominator as the index of our radical. We use the numerator as our exponent. Uh, we can systematically work to get our answer. If you have questions, please let me know. Put it in the comments. Uh, send me an email or I might see you at school. Thanks.